Hey there, it's Brittany, and I am back starting a new series for a cosplay slash costume that I have been working on for quite some time. This was originally gonna be one video, but I have decided to kind of split it up because I am working on making Mithril. The goal is to make a Frodo cosplay eventually, um, and the chainmail shirt has been a process. I have, by the end of this video, as you'll see, I've been working on it for over a year, actually since June-ish, July-ish of 2022, so like however long that's been. Um, I have over 60 hours work into this, so I kind of decided that this video is going to be just making up the chain shirt and the process around that. The next video will be um, doing the embellishments on the chain shirt that actually make it look like Mithril, and then any future videos will be the uh, costume side of things. But overall, I'm pretty excited. It was, it's a lot of work. Um, I, I did edit out quite a few clips that I had filmed over the last year or so, just because you can only watch someone like do a super repetitive motions for so long before you don't care anymore. So it's actually pretty like succinct and more like my thoughts and how I want to go about doing things and how I changed my ideas over time. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited with how it turned out. Sneak peek. Um, stick around and see how it went. I drew up a quick sketch to have an idea of what I wanted this shirt to look like. These are not the final dimensions at all, but it was nice to have this just in my mind while going through the process. When making European 4-in-1, the way this works is European 4-in-1 implies there's one link that has four other links attached to it. So the easiest way to go about starting this is to fully close a handful of links that you can then use later on. So we're going to go ahead and close So these are fully closed and then we're going to open one link. You'll then take four of these closed links and put it onto this open link. And then we will close. So now we have four links on one link, which creates the foreign one. As you continue, you'll notice there's like certain orientations where one row will face one way, the other row will face the other way and vice versa. So to continue this, we'll open another link, pick up our working chain, and we're going to add it to the top here. So like I mentioned about orientation, these links are kind of facing downwards, and then this middle one looks like it's facing upwards. So we want to make sure that this new link that we add is going the same orientation. So to do that, I'm going to go under these two links. So right now, the one that is currently open only has two other links on it, so we need to add two more to complete the four in one. And we'll close this. So once again, we'll open a link, add it to the top here, add two more links to complete the four, and close. There you go. My process was to create strips of chain and then just connect them to create larger strips, which I then connected to make the shape that I was going for. Just a quick update partway through. I have gone through um, one of these bags already, so half a pound of rings, and I got this much done. So uh, 16 by five rectangle and a 10 by 3 rectangle, so very little fallout. So like these right here are pretty much the only ones that were either broken or I overbent. 
Um, so pretty good. I do realize that I've messed up somewhere in here and I'm hoping that I don't notice it when it's all done. So yeah. All right, I'm at the stage now where I need to decide how I want this to look. I'm gonna have this piece kind of come here-ish, you know, come up across the top, and then I'm going to connect these pieces. So right now, this, and then do like a triangle top. Like, you know, you can kind of see it starting. The back I'm going to do in bigger rings and probably a higher gauge. Just because you're not going to really see the back. I'm going to have stuff over it most of the time anyway. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hours. This is about 25 hours of work already. Um, don't want to double that. And then I'm going to do the sleeves with them open on the bottom. And then um, the thought process is to have some chains connect along the side. And I'll probably do those in like a cool chain mail style that I don't know the name because I didn't look it up yet. But that's where we're at now. I'm now working on the neckline in the back so I can kind of start on the shoulders as I decide what I'm going to do here. Um, so I counted, so this is the, you know, each outer edge and I went down and counted across how many rows are here. So there are uh, 40 rows of links and then um, I made this just a little bit longer than 40 so I can actually connect it on the ends and then I'm going to try to round this to almost match this rounding here so it can sit nicely on the back of my neck and shoulders. That's the goal. Um, then I will continue kind of this way to go down the back. For the back, I switched to a larger ring just for ease and because you're not going to see it. So I attached one of the larger rings through two of the smaller rings that are for the shoulders. I did that all the way across and then started working the four in one chain downwards. Still have to finish the back. I'm trying to figure out sleeves. Kind of fill in. Maybe I'll attach and fill in the triangle. And then do the same on the back. And then I'll be able to move and not just have a bunch of stuff here. Update. Sleeves. I think I might leave them open. I was going to connect them, but I think the weight will keep them there. This is what we're working with right now. future, or I guess present. I've been working on this for over a year now. Uh, there's a good chunk of time where I wasn't working on it because I was very burnt out. Um, so I wanted to jump in, give an update on where I'm at this. I don't have a dress form, so I have this on a wetsuit so you can actually see what's going on with it. I filmed a few different clips over the last year kind of explaining my thought process on how this was going to go, mainly around the sleeves, and I have completely changed that like three different times. I did make a like partially complete top that I wore to a renaissance festival last year for my friend's bachelor party, that was awesome, if there's like a picture somewhere, um, but I didn't actually like how that was turning out and it was definitely incomplete, um, and just for the sake of fun. Where I'm at with what I have currently, the neck is, has the slit in it, and I'm gonna have a little 
you know, hook and eye maybe at the top to keep it closed when I want it to be closed, I'm going to be adding a border to make it kind of match the, the mithril. As far as the sleeves go, so this side is what I had completed in order to be ready for the Renaissance Fair. This side is the side that I'm going to be going with. This is what the back looks like. I am sticking with the bigger chainmail on the back because I have over 50 hours of work into this already, uh, including undoing some things that I did do, but you're not going to see the back. I don't need it to match the front. The main thing I'm going to have to solve for is that this is a lot lighter than the front because there's a lot less material, so I might have to add a decorative chain on the back, weights of some sort, so it doesn't always pull forward. I'm going to explain what I did before on this side and what I'm going to be changing to this side. I actually, I might, I'm going to put it on for this part. If you've ever put chainmail on with long hair, you know the struggle. That's why the hood's here. Okay. So starting with what I did previously that I'm going to be changing. Um, the way that this wants to sit, it constantly wants to pull back, which makes the sleeves that I had set up in the wrong spot. Um, I'm hoping to fix that with some weights in the back, but I figure it's probably best to just adjust the sleeve. So what I had did before was add these triangles to make it like a flutter sleeve. And I had it open and it worked for the Renaissance Fair, but I don't think it looks very good. What I'm changing the sleeves to is Right now they're not attached, but literally just like a half a tube. I am gonna attach along this seam and this seam in the back, but I am gonna leave the bottom open like I had originally planned. I think it'll just be a lot more comfortable. There won't be a bunch of bulk right there. It'll bunch up a tiny bit here, but you won't really be able to, you're, you're not gonna see it. Like when I'm wearing it, you're not gonna see it. I'm just gonna know it. Um, so that's the sleeves are just gonna be very plain. So I'm gonna adjust that here. I also had originally made these little like, uh, Cool chains and just attached it to the back for ease of putting on and off. Um, I don't really like that. I don't think it looks very good. Um, so my plan is to just add some extra space here so it's easy to put on and off and just attach it and make it like a pullover shirt. So at this point, I'm going to make this sleeve match this one. So take off these triangles, just make it like a rectangle pretty much add some extra to the side, and then I should have a somewhat complete pullover male. And then on to the fun stuff. I had originally planned on making the entire thing in one video, but I'm now realizing that the detail work is gonna take a long time, and I'm just gonna make that a separate video. So this shirt is as complete as I am going to make it right now. Um, when it comes to the chainmail aspect of things. Will I change some stuff later? Probably, honestly. But for now, this works. It, it's wearable. Um, it's complete. I'm happy with it. I can do this. So yeah. Eventually there'll be a part two with the detail work around the collar that actually like makes it look like mithril, but knowing my rate, that might not be ready for like two more years, so we'll see.